Good evening. I hope you're somewhere comfortable because the following events are true and really scary. It's hard to recall, but I'll start from the beginning. I remember it all began while I was sleeping on a plane. I jolted awake, coughing on my own spit. It was the day before Christmas Eve, and my 300 pound lesbian Aunt Linda was hosting a Christmas dinner. Linda was pretty short. She was also extremely hairy. She used to live in a trailer surrounded by buckets of her own diarrhea. My family tried to get her on the show Hoarders, but every time we mentioned the topic, she would scream and throw poop at us and go ooh ooh ah ah. Anyways, Linda had the money to host because she was hitched to a new lesbian lover who had a lot of money. Apparently, her new girlfriend owned a lot of property in Colorado and was extremely rich. Originally, I didn't want to visit my Aunt Linda for Christmas, but my parents forced me to by drugging me with Benadryl and shoving my sleeping body onto the metal jar of farts that many would call Spirit Airlines. The flight consisted of me, my cousin, and my great uncle. My parents decided to ditch the family and book a vacation to Cancun without me, so I was by myself. I was sitting next to my little cousin, Titi. She was seven years old and had been kicked out of school this year for replacing another kid's eye with an acorn. Titi, noticing I was finally awake, turned her head like an animatronic to face me. Are you excited to see Aunt Linda, Joe? There was no escape. I was trapped on this giant metal tube. I sighed. Yes, TT. I'm excited to fly six hours to visit a deadbeat I haven't seen since I was 12 on a plane that smells like year-old placenta juice and wet socks. Me too, TT chortled. Since it's a six-hour flight, I downloaded a couple of YouTube videos on my iPad that we could watch. TT said with a stare that made her look like a dead fish. With no other form of entertainment, I peered over at her iPad. Titi's iPad was covered in grease and cracks. The only video that I could discern was a thumbnail titled, DIY Turn Yourself Into a Mermaid. Titi swiveled her head to face me and gave an expression that made her look as if she was a gorilla taking violent back shots. I'm a mermaid, she said, unblinking. Yes, you are. I replied, shifting uncomfortably in my seat. I'm fucking serious, Joe. If I drink two quarts of sand, like the instructions say in the YouTube video, I can turn into a mermaid, Titi said with a grave look on her face. Before I could reply, my great uncle Henry clasped my shoulder and I jumped in my seat. I peered over to him. His skin sagged and his face looked like a horse scrotum. Hey, Joe, how's it going? You like ice cream? He asked. I guess, I began. You like fishing, Joe? Uncle Henry continued. Yes, sir, I answered, unsure where this was going. Good, cause we're gonna play a game. You like ice cream? Uncle Henry inquired. What game are we playing? I questioned. Uncle Henry licked his thin, mummy vagina lips and spoke. It's like a game of chicken, but with words. It's called the I Have a Bomb Challenge. You have to take turns yelling, I have a bomb, as loud as you can. And the first person that chickens out loses. Uncle Henry, we're on a plane, I said. What? I didn't hear you. You gotta speak up, boy. Anyways, I'll go first. Uncle Henry stood up from his seat and opened his mouth. I have a- The wait in the TSA detention center took 10 hours. Uncle Henry was finally released and we were able to reclaim our luggage. All of my clothes were now unfolded and scattered throughout the case because they had been savagely searched. It was 2 a.m. and we called Aunt Linda to come pick us up from the airport. It was chilly waiting outside of the airport. I shivered like one of those dogs on the adoption ads you see on TV. Suddenly, a shiny yellow Porsche rolled up and skidded to a stop in front of us. My Uncle Henry leaned down and knocked on the tinted window. The window rolled down and he smiled. Merry Christmas, Linda, he said. <laughs> Aunt Linda replied. I don't care that you get more bitches than me, Linda. I could swoop your ass with my yellow belt and karate. Everyone piled into the car. Aunt Linda floored the gas pedal and we headed to the mountains. 
The drive up the incline to the house was long and hard. The road was endless, and it just kept coming and coming. After reaching the climax of the mountain, we descended into a valley where a small town was waiting for us between the Twin Peaks. I was admiring the view until Aunt Linda stomped both of her feet on the brakes. The car jerked to a stop and my face slammed onto the seat in front of me. I wiped my nose with my arm and gazed at the smear of blood on my sleeve. I pinched my nose and Titi stuck her head into my personal space. Sometimes I let my pet finches eat the boogers out of my nose, but they like to peck really far into my nose hole, and every once in a while, their beak stab my brain, which caused me to have really bad nosebleeds. I nodded. I didn't know how the fuck to respond to that. We entered a large, rustic house. The cold, petrichor smell was replaced with the smell of rotten meat. All of the windows were boarded up, and the interior was devoid of almost any light. This was when things got fishy. Linda, darling, it appears you have returned. How was the drive, my love? The house was dark, and the upstairs was pitch black, so I couldn't see who it was. Suddenly, a woman descended out of the shadows and down the stairs. Cigarette in hand, she had a permanent sneer on her face and was built like a sleek, sexy triangle. <laughs> Aunt Linda screeched. Now, now, Linda, let's leave the dirty talk in the bedroom, not in front of the guests. <laughs> Aunt Linda said, Oh my, you have such a colorful vocabulary, Linda. It's what turns me on about you, sexually. The woman paused and gazed at us. Ah, the family. Linda informed me about your visit whilst we were fornicating. I haven't been introduced properly. I am Vampirica von Eifaken Kalchildren. My last name is a prestigious Romanian family name. What does it mean? Titi inquired. It means that I fucking kill children. Vampirica von I fucking kill children answered. She turned to look at me, her eyes locked in on my bloodstained sleeve. You have such interesting arm. May I inspect? She asked, narrowing her eyes. Before I could answer, Vampirica von I fucking kill children had her entire mouth wrapped around my arm and was licking the blood off my sleeve with her tongue. There was something a little off about Vampirica von I fucking kill children. I couldn't pinpoint what, but there was something mysterious about her, as if she was hiding a deep secret. When she was done, she licked her lips and glowered at us. She placed a hand on her hip in a sassy stance and pursed her lips. So where's the rest of the family? Uncle Henry inquired. Dead. Vampirica von I fucking kill children answered. Dead tired of waiting to see us? Uncle Henry asked with a cheerful expression on his face. Vampirica von I fucking kill children did not say anything. Instead, she crossed her arms like a corpse, looked up at the ceiling, emitted an unearthly erotic moaning sound, and vanished into the shadows behind her. A voice could be heard all around us. My Aunt Linda was launched into the air, soared up the stairs like a ragdoll, and was plunged into the darkness. Yeah, I think they make a lovely couple, Uncle Henry stated. It was true. Aunt Linda and Vampirica von a fucking kill children's chemistry seemed perfect. They had a great dynamic, but still, something about Vampirica von a fucking kill children seemed off. I woke up the next morning with my neck feeling as if it were going through rigor mortis as I attempted to stretch. Despite the limited visibility in the house, I had managed to find a place to sleep in the basement on a musty sofa that smelled like moth queefs. I made my way up to the bathroom, using my phone light to find the handle. I jiggled the knob and the door creaked open. It was pitch black inside of the room, but I had to go. I hesitantly made my way to where I assumed the toilet would be. Suddenly. I tripped over an unseen object and fell face down on the floor. Shocking pain shot through my skull. Hi, Joe, a familiar voice said, cutting through the darkness. I shined my phone light towards the origin of the sound and spotted TT hunched over the toilet with a cup. TT, what the fuck are you doing? I exclaimed. I'm collecting materials for my DIY life hack potion. 
If I drink one cup of toilet water in addition to two quarts of sand and one metal spoon, then I will turn into a mermaid every time I touch water. I stared at Titi. I was debating putting her out of her misery by drowning her in the toilet. I got the idea from my favorite DIY YouTuber, Yolanda Champagne. Titi continued. Who? I asked. Titi shoved her greasy iPad in my face. A quirky-looking woman with colorful glittery hair was talking on the screen. She had some strange makeup on and was excitedly giving a thumbs up while pointing to a diagram of a mermaid. I need to go buy some sand. Is there a convenience store near here? Titi inquired. I needed a break from the gloomy pitch-dark house anyways, so I humored her and looked up on my phone where the nearest store was. It was about a mile away. I will take you to the store. Just let me grab my shoes from downstairs, I said. Oh, thank you, Joe. I'm really happy that you're interested in spending quality time with- Titi began. I had already left the room, leaving Titi to babble to herself. I made my way down to the basement and bumped into the disheveled couch that I had slept on. I slipped on one shoe and was about to put on the other when a voice behind me pierced the silence and caused all of my muscles to jolt. This was when things got fishy. Yeah, the voice harshly said. I gasped and turned around, shining my phone light into Vampirica Von F. Fucking Kill Children's face. She squinted her rodent-like eyes and glared at me. Why are you down here? She demanded. I slept here, I replied, shaking where I stood. You did not go through the door, did you? She inquired. What door? I asked. Vampirica Von I Fucking Kill Children pointed to the direction on my right. I turned my phone flashlight to where she pointed and spotted a faded purple door with peeling paint. Vampirica Von I Fucking Kill Children looked at me with a threatening scowl. That door. Do not enter. Ever. For what reason? I asked, instantly regretting my inquiry. Vampirica Von I Fucking Kill Children snatched my shoulders and drew my face uncomfortably close to hers. It is forbidden. She snapped. A bead of sweat trickled down my face. She then let go of my shoulders. Now, if you will please excuse us, Linda and I must come in sexy time on the fornication couch, Vampirica Von I Fucking Kill Children said, gesturing behind me. I turned around and saw Aunt Linda sitting on the sofa I had slept on. Her grin was so wide, you could fit a sideways banana in her mouth. I left the room. It was still early in the morning, and the sun had barely begun to rise. T.T. and I had exited the house, and we were making our way to the store. I gazed at T.T. as we walked. She was holding a stick that appeared to have a dead frog speared to the end of it, and was reciting the Bible out loud to herself. T.T., don't you think that there's something about Vampirica Vana fucking kill children that strikes you as odd? I mean, she's a little strange, I said, trying to make conversation with her. Joe, that's racist. Just because she's a lesbian doesn't mean that she's a bad person, T.T. retorted. I'm not saying that she's a bad person. It's just that something about her is not quite right, I spoke. We finally entered the store and made our way to the desk near the back. Welcome to Billy Bob Horse Club's convenience store. Where can I get you? The man behind the counter gruffly asked. Hi, can I purchase two quarts of sand? T.T. asked. I don't got no sand in the store, but you can take some sand out of my cat's litter box for five bucks, the man replied. Okay, thank you, T.T. said. We took the sand back to the house and set up in the kitchen. I took one of the boards off the window so that we could see better. Titi mixed the toilet water with the two quarts of kitty litter sand. She placed a metal spoon in the concoction. I couldn't help but smirk. After all, this DIY hack mermaid garbage was a load of bullshit. Take one more good long look at these legs, Joe. When I touch water after drinking this potion, I'll finally become a mermaid. T.T. confidently spoke. I covered my mouth with one hand, stifling a laugh. T.T. chugged the nasty drink and choked on the spoon. She writhed around on the floor like a worm in the sun and finally managed to swallow the metal utensil. Suddenly, a loud thump was heard upstairs. 
Turning my attention to the sound above our heads, I left TT to dry heave on the floor and made my way up the staircase, using my phone as a light to see. I blindly searched the hallway until I found the room where the sound came from. I opened the ajar door and shined my light into the room. This was when things got fishy. Next to the bed, Uncle Henry's decapitated body lay in an awkward position on the ground. The permanent flailed position suggests that there was a violent struggle. I turned my gaze to the wall. The words, Vampirica von I fucking kill children, did this, were written in blood. A voice broke the silence. What are you doing here? I swiveled my phone light and saw Vampirica von I fucking kill children in the corner of the room. Her face was covered in blood. What happened to him? I asked. He trip and fall down, she replied. I pondered this. Uncle Henry was known for being clumsy at times. Will he be joining us for Christmas dinner tonight? I asked. No, she replied bluntly and exited the room. Something was wrong. I don't know what it was, but my gut was telling me that things were amiss. That evening, we sat at a dim, candlelit table for Christmas dinner. I sat next to Titi, who was sawing one of her teeth in half with a steak knife. Aunt Linda entered the room. Hi, Aunt Linda, Titi said. <laughs> Aunt Linda asked inquisitively. Why, yes, I have gained weight. Thank you for noticing, Titi replied. Aunt Linda spat in Titi's face. She then turned and knuckle-walked to her chair. Vampirica von I fucking kill children spoke up. Ja, darling, would you go fetch more napkins from the kitchen? I silently got up and made my way to the kitchen. However, I forgot to take out my phone light and ended up tripping and falling down the basement stairs. I groaned as I looked up from the floor and took out my phone light. I was face to face with the forbidden door. I stared at the faded purple door and pondered what would happen if I opened it. My curiosity was getting the best of me. I reluctantly got up and made my way to the door. I silently turned the handle and opened it. This was when things got exponentially fishy. The inside of the door was pitch black. I shivered as I walked through the doorway and into a dark corridor. The narrow passage became slimmer, and I was forced to walk on my hands and knees the rest of the way. My breath was shortened from the claustrophobic conditions. After reaching the end of the hall, my hand brushed over an old, dusty book. I retrieved the book and took it with me out of the corridor. I placed it on the ground and opened it. It was a yearbook containing photos of smiley, greasy high schoolers. My mouth dropped when my eyes landed on a picture. It was of a young Vampirica von I fucking kill children, who was smiling with a mouthful of braces. Below her photo, the caption read, Vampirica von Vlad. I finally knew the truth now. She hid her real last name from us. The last name Vlad could only mean one thing. She was a vampire. That explained her glistening sharp fangs, the pitch black house, and her gothic demeanor. In fact, Uncle Henry didn't trip. Vampirica von Vlad probably killed him. I told you not to go through the forbidden door! Vampirica shrieked from behind me. I screamed. She lurched forward, exposing her glistening fangs, ready to rip my face off, but I dodged her. She easily recovered and then looked at me. Jo, darling, as the kids say, it is Jover for you. I screamed and bolted up the stairs. I stumbled into the dining room. What's going on, Joe? Titi asked. Run! I screamed as I ran past her, fleeing through the front door. Titi dropped her utensils and followed me out the door. <laughs> Aunt Linda asked, confused. We were in the woods. It was dark, and to make matters worse, it started to rain. TT and I kept running. I was as soaked as a Genshin Impact player's armpit. Almost tripping on the mud from the downpour, I glanced at TT behind me. 
My eyes widened in absolute disbelief. My mind couldn't process what I was seeing. This was when things got super duper mega extremely fishy. TT no longer had legs. Instead, she had a mermaid tail and was flopping around on the ground, desperately trying to follow me. I told you I'm a mermaid, Joe! TT yelled. Shit timing! I screamed back. Let her by! A furious voice rang through the woods. I grabbed Titi's fishtail and hurriedly drug her through the mud, trudging through the dark forest and desperately attempting to avoid capture. However, I stopped in my tracks. In front of us was a small, yet colorful... Uh. Uh. In front of us was a small, yet colorful cabin. I looked closer and saw that the door to the cabin was made out of a surfboard. There was also a Barbie doll taped to the wall next to the door with her hair engulfed in flames as a makeshift candle. In addition to that, slime and glitter seemed to leak out of the window on the side of the shack. I didn't have time to think. Everything was descending into chaos. I kicked the door open and shoved TT and myself inside. I slammed the door and locked it. The floor of the cabin was covered in slime and glitter. What the hell? I said to myself. A bizarre looking woman stepped out of a dark corner of the room. Oh my goodness, hello, welcome in. <laughs> the woman giggled. I couldn't believe it. It was a DIY life hack YouTuber that TT was obsessed with. Yolanda Champagne? TT asked, absolutely flabbergasted. Yes, it is me. <laughs> I see you watch my videos. Yolanda Champagne chortled gesturing to Titi's mermaid body. A loud rapping knock came from the door. Little boy and girl, would you please let me in so I can kill you? Vampirica Von Vlad screamed. I turned to the kooky YouTuber. Yolanda, please, whatever you do, do not invite her inside. Our step-aunt is a vampire and she wants to kill us, I pleaded. Oh, okay. We need garlic to kill her. Yolanda said with a smile. Do you have any garlic? I asked. No, sorry. But we can make our own human-made garlic using a simple DIY trick you can do in three steps. Yolanda said. I'll do anything. Where do we start? I asked. Yolanda grabbed a jar off a nearby shelf. Okay, so first you need to drink this jar of cockroach semen. Fuck no, I'm not doing that, I yelled. Come outside so I can rip your lungs out of your asshole and beat you to death with them. Then Perica Von Vlad growled. I'll do it, Titi said, blindly following Yolanda's tactics. Yolanda put the jar to Titi's lips. Okay, dumb hats, gabble gabble. <laughs> Yolanda tittered. I watched in absolute disgust as Yolanda poured the cockroach semen down Titi's throat. I looked away and gagged violently, fighting to keep my stomach contents where they should be. Okay, step two. In order for the life act to work, you need to pull your best friend's tooth out. Yolanda said. I don't have any friends. I consider myself to be my best friend, Titi replied. What about me? Aren't I your friend? I asked, wondering why I was feeling slightly upset and jealous. Oh, I don't really see you as a friend. You're kind of a dick to me, Joe. Titi said. My mouth dropped open. I was dumbfounded. Okay, this won't hurt a bit. Yolanda chirped. Yolanda placed a metal Chinese finger trap over Titi's tooth and ripped it clean out. Titi hollered in pain. That hurt, Titi exclaimed. Yeah, I lied, Yolanda replied. What's the last step so we can get this over with, Titi said. Okay, so the last step is to recite the Pledge of Allegiance backwards, Yolanda responded. Titi recited the Pledge of Allegiance backwards as Vampirka Von Vlad banged on the door outside. You sucked, Joe. I literally fuck your aunt, who is not a monkey. Okay, great. 
So now your womb should be filling with the garlic and the birthing process shall commence any second now. Yolanda chimed. Birth? Titi said, shocked. Yes, birth! How else do you think we'll be able to harvest garlic from humans to defeat the vampire? Yolanda said nonchalantly. But she's a mermaid. Mermaids can't give birth. They don't have vaginas, I said. Oh, that's right. She's still wet from the rain. As long as she's touching water, she'll remain the mermaid, Yolanda said. Do you have anything to dry her off with? I questioned. No, but we can use a simple life hack to dry her off. Drink this. She handed me a Chick-fil-A milkshake. This isn't a life hack. It's just a milkshake, I proclaimed. Just drink it. <laughs> she and I both drank the milkshake, and instantly, I started uncontrollably breaking wind. Understanding Yolanda's intentions, she and I turned and violently flatulated on Titi. Titi cried the entire time. About five minutes later, Titi was completely dry, and her original legs replaced her fishtail. Oh, thank God, that's finally over, Titi exclaimed. No, no, it's not, no, Yolanda said with a sympathetic grin. Titi convulsed and dropped to the ground. God fucking damn it, I'm giving birth, Titi screamed. Push, Titi, you can do it, I yelled. A bunch of garlic shot out of Titi's pants and splat all over the floor. Without hesitating, I grabbed some and ran to the door. I unbolted the latch and swung it open. Vampirica von Vlad was waiting. There you are, she furiously spat. Die, I screamed as I threw a barrage of garlic at Vampirica von Vlad. The garlic harmlessly bounced off her. She looked down at the garlic on the ground and turned her gaze back up at me with a look of severe confusion on her face. What the actual fuck, Joe? She said. That's impossible. You're a vampire. Garlic is supposed to kill you, I cried out. What? No. I am not a vampire. What the fuck gave you that idea? Vampirica von Vlad snapped. So many reasons. Why do you have fangs? I asked. It's a birth defect. I have hyperextended canine teeth because my mother married her cousin, she responded. Okay, but why were you so defensive of your yearbook photo, which contained your real vampiric last name and not the fake human-sounding one that you used? I questioned. I divorced a woman named Glinda I fucking killed children, and I kept the last name because it has a nice ring to it. But I don't give a shit about that. I care that you saw my atrociously ugly high school yearbook photo. My mind reeled. The... The, the body! Uncle Henry's dead body! You violently killed him! I yelled. People kill other people all the time! She retorted. So wait, you're just a regular murderer? I asked. Yes, and? She replied. You thought she was a vampire? Titi said. That's literally so anti-Semitic, Joe. Just because she's a lesbian doesn't mean she's a bad person. But she killed someone. I said. That's not important right now. What's important is that we conquer our biases and come together to give holiday cheer as a family. Titi replied. <laughs> Aunt Linda agreed. She had been watching the whole time. I sighed. I felt terrible. I walked over to my Aunt Linda. Aunt Linda, I am so sorry. I feel like I ruined Christmas. Is it still too late to make it up to you? I asked. <laughs> Aunt Linda said. But we don't have a Christmas tree, I replied. Remember that milkshake you drank? Yolanda said with a devious smile. No, I began. I hunched over, clutching my stomach. I screamed in pain as I began birthing a whole Christmas tree. Everyone around me clapped and cheered. Merry Christmas, everybody! Yolanda proclaimed. I continued to shriek in pain as the pine tree slowly exited my body. 
However, I guess Christmas was saved after all. <laughs>